Hi everyone, um, welcome to this week's Wednesday webinar. Um, this week's topic and also this month's topic is all to do about email marketing and making sure you guys can get it right. Um, a lot of people, um, especially businesses and even personal, um, don't like receiving emails. They get their email inboxes get inundated. Mine definitely does um, and even I get annoyed at it um, but it's still really important for your business. So um, this week's session is all about how you can do it right so that you know the people who have signed up to receive your emails actually want to receive them and are looking forward to having them in their inbox instead of getting annoyed at um, the emails that are coming in. So we'll start um, obviously um, just to introduce what email marketing is. So it's a form of digital marketing. You know, it's a way of you being able to directly communicate with your prospects, with um, your current customers, perhaps with um, previous customers and you want to sort of get them back on board and um, get them buying from you again um, and ultimately they are people that have said they want to hear from you because they've given you their email so um, it's how what you do with it next that counts um, so what we'll do is we'll go straight through to I need to make sure I'm clicked on this one um, to the first section which is email versus social I know definitely a few of my clients have um sort of put a lot of their time and effort into their social media and um, get a lot of their client base through that which is obviously great um, but the problem with that is you know email is owned media it belongs to you so all of the um, sort of the email lists and the names and the email addresses that is is yours essentially unless they obviously come in and say I don't want you to have my email anymore and obviously then you remove it so with that, you are in control of what you do with that information, whereas with social media, um, it's somebody else's platform. It's a third party platform, you know, and there are ways that you could be removed from that platform. Um, and if obviously you lost all your social media presence and you lost all that, that way to engage with your audience, what impact would that have on your business? You know, if all of your business is coming through social media, that's, you know, that could be quite scary. It could, like, you know, destroy your business um, or make it very difficult for you to get back on your feet. So, um, you know, there's sort of two ways where this could sort of happen is the, like one of them, which is probably unlikely um, that you breach the terms and conditions of the social media uh, platform. And, you know, they basically shut you down and say that they don't want you on their platforms anymore you know think of donald trump he's not allowed on um certain social media platforms anymore um you know and and that is a reality that that could happen the other one which is kind of a bit scarier and a bit more um more likely for small businesses for this to happen is if your um so your social media uh profile is hacked and you lose access to it yeah so that's that's probably the key one. And that's definitely the one that I've been seeing coming up where people have lost access to their Facebook pages, to their Instagram pages, um, all because uh, they have been, um, had like a security risk and have lost the access. So if you haven't done that, done, or, done it already, make sure that you've got two factor authentication set up on your social media channels to protect against that. Okay. Um, I'm, I've got a reel on my Instagram profile which shows you how to do that on your um instagram uh, profile uh if you don't know how to do it but it's all in your sort of privacy settings um for all your social media channels so definitely do that if you haven't um yeah so basically um really the difference about your email and versus social media is that you know you it belongs to you and you have more control over it and you're not going to lose um, that information, that way to connect and engage with your audience, um, unless they choose not to want to be um, involved or engage with you anymore. Okay. So, um, and obviously the other side of things you can see on the screen, you've got a couple of um, stats on there that I really like. You've got 99% of consumers check their emails on a daily basis. So you're, you know, you're basically delivering a message to them in a space that they use every single day. Um, and as long as, you know, your email gets past their spam filters, which it should do if you're using a really good email um, provider, uh, it's going to hit their inbox. They are going to see it 
Um, and obviously it boils down to the, your subject title to entice them into actually reading the email, which is the next step. Whereas on social media platforms, because of all the algorithms that they've got in play and the fact that they, you know, they want you to be paying for ads and for um, boosted content, your, you know, as a business page or, um, or a business profile, your content isn't necessarily um, seen on the news feeds of the people that are following you. So obviously it's great to have numbers following you on your on your profiles, but they may not, may not really see your content. And I know that for a fact, like, you know, a few years back, there was people posting, asking if people could see this content because they'd seen a massive um, drop in that interaction and that engagement. And that's the reason why. Um, and this stuff, stat that I love is like you know two percent of your Facebook fans see your posts in the news feed so have a look at the numbers that you've got that like and follow you take a look at how much two percent is um and you know and it's kind of yeah quite shockingly bad really so unless you're willing to put money into your social media profiles it's very difficult to um get the cut type of messaging and content across um on those channels which is why it's great to have different channels that you communicate with your target audience um, and not just put all your eggs in one basket. Okay, so yeah, so um, with your uh, emails, you know, the content hits the inbox, it's there, they may get lots of other ones. So you do have that, that you know, the next sort of barrier of getting them to read it is and making sure you've got an enticing subject title, like I said before. So um, my plan is, obviously, this month is email marketing webinars. So next week, I'm thinking we should cover, like, how to do enticing subject titles and, um, you know, like, look at the copywriting side of things to make sure that you're maximizing on your ability to get people to open those emails once you've um, sent them through. So let's go through to the next stage which is the platforms that you can use um my basically my three picks for platforms that i recommend to people who are um either new to it managing their email marketing themselves um are mailchimp MailerLite, and convertkit so you know they're like MailChimp's obviously been around a long time. I love the thing where you send the email and you have like the monkey's finger on the button about where you're about to press it and like send it out to make you really worry about um, sending your email. Um, but they've got a really good platform. I do think, you know, it used to be my go-to platform for myself and for my clients, um, but I feel that their freemium version feels like it's become a bit more restricted than it used to be. Um, and actually looking at all the different design options that you can have, um, it can be a bit overwhelming for new people or somebody who just, you know, wants to do it and, and get it done. So I would sort of recommend, like I, at the moment I'm using ConvertKit and I, I love the simplicity of the email design. They don't give you loads of different options. Um, so you can just get your content on there and get it out. Um, and it definitely makes sending emails a lot quicker. Um, you know, you don't have to have a complicated template design. Um, you know, there's, if there's too much choice, it leads to indecision, procrastination. So yeah, use something like, um, I personally haven't used Mail Alive, but I have heard good things about it. So, um, you know, if any of you do use it, let me know if it's any good. Um, and I may have a little look into it and see if we can do some pointers on that later later on. Um, what else do I want to tell you about this? And also, yeah, if you like, obviously I'm using ConvertKit. If you're interested in me doing sort of um, a how-to video on it, let me know again um, and I can pull something together because it's really straightforward. Um, and the cool thing about all of these platforms is they also do like landing pages and sales pages and stuff too. So you can really sort of um, use them for your marketing strategy, uh, for, obviously your digital marketing strategy online. So yeah, they're great. Um, definitely have a look at them. Right, next up, let's get to actually creating your emails. Probably the most um, sort of well-known form of email that you can send out to people are newsletters, you know, keeping people in the know of what's going on at your business, um, you know, and probably one of the key things is that you want to know like how regularly should you send an email um you know and honestly I think it's a bit one of those questions like it you know how long's a piece of string it can be um like 
I think it's personal preference, you know, think about how, how you feel about how um, regularly you get emails. What do you think is too much? What do you think is not enough? Um, you know, personally, I prefer once a week um, or even once a month, as long as like it's valuable content that I look forward to getting. Uh, there's a company um, I used to get emails from called Phrasey. So they're an AI um, and they actually do subject titles, actually. Um, uh, yeah, AI subject titles for emails and their emails were just really entertaining. Um, and I actually look forward to receiving them each week, whereas there are definitely others where I'm kind of like, oh, please stop emailing me. It's too much. So it's always down to personal preference. Um, you basically want to find the sweet spot between how often you have news to share um, and how regularly your customers want to hear from you. Um, you know, if you're not sure, just ask them, right? Market research is such a powerful tool. It's at your disposal. Um, you know, interact with them. Ask them if they if it's too much. You know, you're not going to know unless you ask them. So, um, you know, definitely be in touch and communicate with your audience and your customers and find out what they want from you. I mean, it's the best way to know. Um, and I probably would say also, like, you know, um, you want to have value in your emails, um, especially in your newsletter style ones. You don't want to come across too salesy. Um, you, it's, it's about sort of engaging and, and building awareness and, and building a relationship, not just, you know, trying to get to people to buy from you. So you want to offer real value to your potential customers, to the people that are reading your emails. You know, you want to remind your old customers that you're still around. Maybe you haven't been in touch with them for a while. It's a great way to do that let people know what you're up to if you've got sort of news to share that's a great way of um, telling people and just reminding them that you're around and um, you know if you if you is your business grown if you want a new contract if you've got a new product out or you're offering new service so you just you know just um give them some news and um, then you know there's nothing wrong with sharing sort of information um, and but always sort of look at it from their point of view, like keep your reader in mind first and think about what's important to them um, and what can you give them that's beneficial, not necessarily what's beneficial for you, because obviously we want them to uh, pay and buy things off of us. That's what's important. But for them, it's about that. So you know, sort of whether it's education, entertainment. Um, I think probably the best thing to think about is doing, you know, we did a while back um, in one of the webinars about content creation, about um, the content marketing matrix, like the four little quadrants. If you haven't seen it, have a look at that one. And it basically says there's like four different ways, four different types of content that you can share with your audience. You can educate, entertain, inspire and convince. OK, so and obviously the convince one is closer to the the getting a purchase part um obviously educate and inspire um is around the uh, awareness type of thing and um, so you know really with your emails you want to be looking to educate entertain and inspire and maybe a little dashing dash of uh, convincing people to buy from you as well so you you're thinking about building brand loyalty reminding customers you exist and providing share worthy content as an slight aside uh, last month we did seo and one of those was about backlinks so obviously with your um email you have uh the you know you would have the content on there that you would be sharing a link to your site so you're basically getting them to your site so that is a link in a sense okay so think about that so every time you're sending these out you're building your links Right, next up. So this is kind of for the guys who got, yep, yeah, nailed the newsletter. We've got that down. What other emails um, can we do? And the next one is, so it's like basically campaigns. Okay, so I've just run through a few different um, ideas for you guys to uh, come up with different ways of doing um, email series um, and just sort of really building that sort of email marketing uh, aspect to your PR and marketing strategy. So first up, what is an email campaign? Well, you know, it's basically a series of emails that engage your subscriber, takes them on a journey towards loving your brand, your product, your service, and wanting to buy from you. 
So, um, you know, you could do this in a variety of different ways. There could be, it could be a daily or weekly challenge, like thinking of um, Veganuary, there's like 30 day challenges, or, you know, I think I signed up to one years ago about a, like having a green smoothie every day and you got like 30 recipes of green smoothies in a day and stuff like that. So, you know, this, this is great for like fitness um, uh, challenges or health challenges or things like that, or creating some sort of challenge. Um, so yes, yeah, so with your welcome email series, you can basically do uh, sort of an introduction, um, invite to follow um, social media channels, offer advice on how to get the best out of your um, site or your business, give them a gift, say thank you for subscribing, that sort, sort of thing. Or most importantly, you just basically want to wow them. Um, but don't overdo this. Like, you know, I signed up to a site a while back. I basically got five emails in succession all on the same day and it just massively put put me off. I was really keen to sort of um, find out more about the business and how it would work and how it would help me and be beneficial. Um, but literally, you know, coming back from the school run with three emails back to back within the space of like three hours, I was like, mm, this is too much for me. And I just straight off unsubscribed. So, you know, err on the side of caution on the amount and the frequency of doing these types of welcome emails. Um, next up, got promotional campaigns. So these are probably the types you have in your email box right now that, you know, they put you off ever using email for your business. Um, they're really generic. There's no real thought in who's receiving them or whether they're relevant. Um, so that's so when it comes to promotional types of campaigns, you want to really understand your subscribers, perhaps segment them out and only send emails to them that you think would they would genuinely be um, worth their while receiving. So you want to it might it takes obviously additional time, um, but the return on that will be much better than just sending generic blanket emails to everybody. Um, so yeah, you kind of from the segmenting point of view, you know, if you've got people that are keen on um, certain aspects of your business, uh, that that's how you want to sort of whittle them down. So you're sending really targeted emails to them. Um, next up, we've got uh, like sort of celebrations. So thinking of like seasonal um, and hallmark hallmark campaign so you know like whether it's the times of year or like whether it's mother's day father's day birthdays easter christmas all your festivities um you know these are great for retail businesses and also like b2c so business to consumer brands so with these types of emails you're going to want to plan for these you don't want to be last minute about them you want to start early although don't start too early no one wants to get christmas emails in september um, but definitely help sort of plan your marketing for the year and include those email mark marketing um, campaigns that like, around seasonal types of events. Um, you know, plan the timings for those so that you know when you're doing them and it's not all last minute. And, um, you know, these types of emails are usually filled with offers and discounts. And, you know, depending on your business, you can add in helpful advice and guidance or link to blog posts or videos and all that sort of stuff, too. So there's like really a wealth of the types of content that you can be putting into your emails. Next up, we have um, automated. So these are um, so sort of this kind of goes to your next level and you've got sort of a, a, a funnel of emails, if you like, where they follow um uh, an action that somebody has done so perhaps they've signed up to a list or you know it's um, related to uh, so say they've clicked on a link in a, a previous email and it will trigger them to be sent a different email um, you know there there are there is a policy possibility within these email softwares to um, send emails to people that haven't clicked on something or haven't interacted or haven't opened them. Um, personally, I would be cautious here. I would tread carefully on emailing people who aren't interacting with you because they, you know, they may or may there may or may not be a reason why they're not doing it. So just tread very carefully when you're um, thinking about creating an email sort of automated email for people who don't click on something. Um, you've also got obviously like e-commerce related, like if someone's abandoned items in a cart um, and you send a friendly reminder email to say, don't forget you've um, popped these in your shopping trolley. Would you still like them? Um, I know I'm very good at uh, adding things to a cart on a page and then um, something else crops up and then I forget to order it. So, yeah, so they're kind of they're quite handy for um, people 
um, uh, you know, there's also ones about showing interest in a product, um, whether they've bought a specific product, maybe there's a related product, you know. Um, but again, tread carefully on this type of email, um, especially if it's sort of just showing an interest because it can feel a bit stalkery. So just err on the side of caution on that front. Another type, which is quite good, and actually I did a brainstorming session a while back um, and we talked about this a lot, is the after sales and actually how lots of people don't actually factor in communicating after a sale. Um, and these can be great. Uh, retained like you know retained clients people who've already bought from you will actually spend more money than a new client so it's always good to make sure that they are happy and on board with you and rave about you and love you and all that sort of stuff um so yes so follow up with your customers no brainer you know you can get reviews recommendations you can encourage referrals through like offering an incentive you can give help and advice um i've got a couple of clients that are cake makers and so as i was making my notes i was like i'm gonna put this in here you know so maybe you're a cake maker um you can offer storing instructions advice on how to make the cake last longer or how to cut the cake i'm always the person that's asked to cut the cake and i don't really know how to do it so i'm you know standing there with a knife trying to figure out the best way to get the most out of the cake for everybody so um you know maybe sending over the ingredients so that they know what's in the cake for maybe it's helpful if they have guests that have allergies just to know what's in there um you know, there's lots of sort of information that you you have as a business owner, as somebody who's providing a product or a service that you could then share with them that will just improve their overall experience of the product or the service or um, just your brand as well. So, you know, tell people, think about what people want to know um, or what you want them to know um, and, you know, basically serve your customers. Um, also, from the sort of reviews, I've just made a little note, make sure I don't forget to say this, um, from the reviews and referral side, you know, don't hound people for them, give them, like, ask them to do it, maybe give them a friendly little nudge later on down the line, but definitely not like multiple, give me a review, give me a review, give me a review, because they just get annoying as well. Okay, and then finally, we've got sort of re-engagement. So we kind of touched on this a little bit with um, the bit about people not interacting with your email list so with re-engagement emails you know it's basically a process to clean that email list and make it the best email list like you know like with social media um you know having loads of numbers on your email subscriber list may feel like a good thing may sound like a good thing oh i've got 10,000 subscribers yeah it sounds good but if they're not interacting and if they're not engaging with you it's not you know it's it's irrelevant really it's the number that are engaging that is important so you know don't be afraid to clean up your list and you can do this through re-engagement so basically you know it's an email saying asking them if they still want to to receive the emails um because then you know you're helping them out they may be looking for particular types of emails. You know, this is the opportunity to ask them some questions, get some market research. It may be that they want to receive the emails. Um, maybe they have read them, but you it hasn't triggered on your system that they've been read. That definitely happens as well. Um, so, yeah, just uh, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Obviously, don't do it loads, maybe once or twice a year. Just clean your list up. Um, and then obviously then your um, percentages of like, you know, your open rates, your click rates, all of that stuff, well, you'll have a much higher percentage than you've got some massive list with not a lot of people engaging in that. So yeah, I would definitely recommend doing that every now and again through the year. Um, and then finally, we're gonna finish on do's and don'ts. So we've obviously covered quite a few of these um, in the previous sections and I'll just run through them again and the new ones that are in here also. So first up, especially for all you guys um, in the EU, we need to be GDPR compliant. Um, if you don't know what that means, um, you should do, uh, but you can have a look at the website. I think it's ico.org. I will double check and I will um, add it into the uh, chat box or the comments if you're watching on, this, on Facebook. Um, yeah, so be GDPR compliant, make sure that they have said they want to sign up to have receive marketing emails from you. Um, and obviously, if they ask not to and to be removed, make sure that they're removed as well. Um, obviously, there's lots more things, but I could probably do a whole webinar on GDPR on itself. So, um, yeah, just 
definitely make sure that you're covering those bases. Uh, double opt-in. So when people sign up for your email list, it's best practice to get them to uh, sign up. It's kind of signing up twice where you so they'll put their email in. You then say, thank you very much. Now check your inbox. We've sent you an email to confirm your subscription. So then they go into their email and click confirm. So that basically is a double opt-in. So one, you've got the right email address. Um, so they've definitely signed up and they have definitely, definitely said, yes, I want to receive these emails. Um, and you can also use that as an opportunity to say to them, you know, um, add this email address into your contact list so that you're, you will receive these emails and they won't go into spam. Um, so yeah, doing that is a great way of ensuring your email gets into their primary inbox um, and not in the junk or the spam or whatever your email provider calls it. Um, you know, another do check inactive subscribers, like we said, clean that list up, uh, you want to have the most cleanest list possible. So you've got really high level engagement. Remember that you want to engage them. So you want to entertain or inspire or educate them. Um, keep your emails like short and sweet. They don't need to be too long. You can just give them, you know, like an image, a bit of an introduction to the blog or the video or whatever it is you're sending them to um, so that they can get more information if they want to on your site. Um, you know, make your content accessible. Yeah, give it multi format. So as I've been doing these webinars, I've been thinking more and more about the types of content that people can be creating and stuff. Um, and one of the things we covered in the content creation webinar a while back was, you know, the ways people consume content. And that's for, so for online stuff is basically either reading, watching or listening. So, you know, you really want to cover these three bases because people consume content and have a preference of consuming content in different ways. It's either whether they read an article, um, watch a video, um, you know, listen to the, an audio file or a podcast. They're quite easy to make, uh, put together, actually. Um, you know, and also accessibility wise, you can also, you know, make sure you've got your alternative text on there for your images and stuff to help people who, um, you know, um, need that element of the site to be able to consume that content as well. Now for the don'ts. Don't be spammy, don't send too many emails, um, don't be salesy, um, you know, don't hound your non-active subscribers for interaction, check if they want to um, still hear from you, you know, um, they're kind of, there's not a lot of don'ts, um, basically, you know, don't send them to too regularly, um, you know, find your sweet spot, ask ask your target audience what they what they want to hear and what when they when they want you to um communicate with them and all that sort of stuff they're you know the, it's the best place to get that information um and yeah and just remember to encourage engagement you want to um you know entertain inspire and educate um email isn't the main event it's the warm-up act and it's getting people to your site getting them interacting with you and becoming you know fan friends so yeah that is email marketing doing it right in a nutshell um i am now going to um go over and chat to the guys in the webinar um, and get their comments and stuff and answer any questions that they have. Um, and on Facebook, obviously you've got the comments. Um, you can drop comments and I will be hanging out there at eight o'clock tonight for you guys. Um, should you have any questions as you watch this later? Okay, thanks very much.